Good morning everyone. Here we are going to start our the second session with the chapter number 2 which is specific for the sexual reproduction in flowering plant. In this chapter we will only discuss about the reproduction, how the reproduction takes place into the flowering plant and I hope you are all are doing well and enjoying this online uh, sessions. They will so let's start our session right um, our session for today which is the sexual reproduction in flowering plants here we go so sexual reproduction in flowering plant means fusion of male and female gamete by forming the zygote and uh, zygote which develop into the new in individual by the embryogenesis means here the fusion of the male and female gamete means one process is involved in the uh, the first process is involved in the sexual reproduction is the fertilization which result uh, which resultant is the zygote and then the zygote develop into the new individual by the process of the embryogenesis so the where, now the question is arises where the development of uh, development of flowering plants takes place. So, uh, so reproduction will take place. So uh, the answer is a flower is a structure where the sexual reproduction takes place. And the floral axis which bear the floral organ is called the receptacles. That is not elongation of the internode takes. Uh, elongation of internode takes place because the way in, uh, that's the various flower walls differentiate close to it, each other at the receptacle there is a no any elongation of the internode that's why whatever the petals sepals scallops corolla whatever is there all the floral walls are very close to the e we are able to see the very close to each other now the outermost wall, wall is called the calyx after that was corolla, then endosium, then innermost is your gynosium. Endosium is your male sex organ and gynosium is your female sex organ. So um, basically the um, if we talk about the one unit of the androsium, androsium is a plural word, uh, word. If you talk about the sing uh, singular, so it is a stamen. Stamen is made up of the two parts, filament and antho. Stamens are the diathecus. Diathecus means bilobe, which are the two lobe, in which each lobe contains the two microsporangia or pollen sets. Means if the one lobe contains the two microsporangia, that means the two lobe contain four microsporangia. Okay? And the two lobe of the anthers are connected by uh, with the help of the connect, uh, connective. One thing is here also uh, to be noted, the monothecus or um, this sporangiate anthers are present in the member of the Malvaceae and other plant. Monothecus means there was the diethicus. Here we are discussing about the monothecus that means one low. Bisporangiate means two sporangia are there. So this condition we are able to find where into the malvasi. Another thing is the aerothombium has the monothecus monosporangiate and the monothecus means one lobe, monosporangiate means only one sporangia it will be. That means in this case the anther had the one lobe which contain one mm, sporangia, micro sporangia. Now the carpel consists of the three parts, style, uh, stigma, style and ovary in which the stigma provides the surface for the landing of the your pollen grain and style, style is a tube like structure which connects the stigma with the ovary and ovary contains the ovule which is also called megasporangium which develop and attached uh, and they are attached to the placenta through the phonicles means between the ovule attached with the placenta there is an axis between these two that axis is called that attachment or axis is called phonicles 
Okay. Now the functions of the flower is development of pollen and egg, pollination, fertilization, development of seed and fruit, and dispersal of seed and fruits. Here you have, or uh, I have already allotted you the homework. I hope everyone has done it, so, did it. The study of the type of the stamen on the basis of the cohesion of stamens, relative length of the stamens, and adhesion of the stamens. Thank. You. Let's see about the structure of microsporangium or pollen sac. How it is? What is the structure of the microsporangium and pollen sac? Microsporangium surrounded by the four wall. The outermost wall is known as is the single layered, uh, and it is known as the epidermis. In the, after that, the endothelium is present, which help in the digestion. It is also a single layer with the fibrous band of the cellulose. Which is slightly lignified at the maturity means prevent in the initial stage it is a band with the cellulose, but when it is mature, when it is mature, it is lignified. Okay. Next uh, after that, the your third layer is your middle layer, which is made up of two to three layer, uh, short, and these. So these layers are the short life and degenerate at the time of formation of pollen grain. Okay. Next and the last one is your trabeculum, which is the innermost layer. It help in the nourishment of the pollen grain. Have the dehiscent uh, dense cytoplasm and generally more than one nucleus. One more thing is uh, here to um, uh, to be noted is they have those uh, to um, for the identification of the trabeculum cells. They have the dense cytoplasm and more than one nucleus. If you are able to see the line, the um, these kind of the cells, that means it is a trabeculum. Okay. Next is your center of the microsporangium have the sporogenous cells, which uh, which is also known as microsporocytes. They are compact, um, compactly arranged and homogeneous cells. Okay. So in the center there was a cell. There will be a cell which is known as sporogenous cells or microsporocyte. Now the here we let's discuss in short about the function of tubetum. It is a nutritive immune function. They also serve the transport channels through the uh, through which the material can reach to meiocyte. Meiocyte means the microsporocytes. Okay, during the mitotic. Division, mitot during the meiotic division. Here we have to if there is in a written meiotic, that means it is a meiosis. Okay. So when the meiosis division takes place in the meiot meiocytes, so it result the pollen mother cells. Also, the tapetal cell help into the Fossilization of the pollen grain because it helps into the external thickening of exine by sporulinin. Sporulinin is a biomolecule which provides the resistance to the physical and biological decomposition. Okay. Next is your uh, the last function is it helps in the transport of the pollen kit material. Pollen kit is the outermost oily layer. Forming the thick coating on the pollen surface of the many insect pollinated species means these characteristics only we are able to find in the many insect pollinated species. Okay, those plant which pollinated by the insect only we are able to find in that. Next is your tryptophan. Tryptophan is a protein which releases from the pollen grain and cause hay fever. And pollen allergy when the pollen grain are moist means when the pollen grain are absorb moisture, so they release a protein which is known as trypsin. They cause the allergic reaction in the human being. Now let's 